friends, and welcome back. So yesterday we spent some time together rounding a math to the nearest 10. We talked about benchmark numbers, which are really those multiples of 10, numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on. And so we took some numbers from our math notebooks, and we actually practiced rounding those. Today we're going to continue with that same topic, rounding to the nearest 10. So we're going to practice that some more together. The first thing that we're going to do is watch a short video reviewing how to round to the nearest 10. Then after that, you're either going to shut off the video and print off a paper that you will cut and then glue squares into place to do a sort and then take a picture and submit that through Canvas to your teacher or you can choose to do the digital version that's directly in Google Slides. So totally your choice. Um, whichever way you would like to do it, you are welcome to do. So let's get started with our video first, and then we'll come back to how to do the number sort to practice rounding to the nearest 10. Throughout your mathematical life, you will find situations where you will need to round numbers. And you might be saying, well, why? what situations would that be? Well, these would be situations where you're trying to get an estimate on things, where you're trying to, maybe you have a measurement and you're, you want it to be a little bit less exact to simplify things, or you don't trust how exact the measurement is. So here we're going to actually think about what rounding is. And we're going to round each of these numbers, 36, 34, 35, 26, and 12, we're going to round each of them to the nearest. 10. And I'll give you a hint of that. what that means. That essentially says take each of these numbers and find the multiple of 10 that it is closest to. So what are multiples of 10? Well, 10 times 0 is 0, 10 times 1 is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so on and so forth. So I encourage you to pause this video and just based on what I just told you, what is the nearest multiple of 10 to each of these numbers? Try to think about that. Well, to think about it a little bit deeper, let's actually put a number line here. I'll put two number lines over here. So we've got some number lines here. And let's think about where these points would sit on this number line. So this first number, 36, where does it sit on this number line? Well, it's between 30 and 40. And this little blue mark is 35. It's halfway between. So 36 is going to be is going to be a little higher than that. So 36 is going to be right over here. And if we zoom in between 30 and 40, so if we say that this is 30 and this is 40, where is 36 going to be? So once again, this is 35. 36 is one notch above that. So 36, 36 is going to be right over here. So if we, if we want to round to the nearest 10, to the nearest multiple of 10, what are the two possibilities here? Well, I could take 36. I could ter take 36, and I could round up to the multiple of 10 above it, which is 40. So I could round up to 40, or I could round down to the multiple of 10 below it, which is, which is 30. And so I need to figure out which of these numbers is it closer to. Well, when you just look at that, even just look eyeballing it, you can see it. But you could also say, like, 36 is only 4 away from 40, and it's 6 away from 30. It's closer to 40, so we are going to round up. We are going to round up to 40. This is literally called rounding up. Now let's try some of these other numbers. What about 34? And I encourage you to pause the video. Think about what number you would get if you were to try to round it up or round it down, and then which one it is actually closer to. Well, 34 is right over here on this number line. 34 is right over there on this number line where we zoom in. 34 is right over here, 34. And we have two options. The multiple of 10 above 34, we do that those same colors. The multiple of 10 above 34 is 40. Multiple of 10 below 34, again, is 30. Now, which one is it closer to? Well, it's only 4 away from 30 and 6 away from 40, so it's closer to 30. So we are going to round down to 30. We are going to round down to 30. And notice, we went to 30. You might say, hey, when we rounded up, the tenths place increased from 3 to 4, from 30 to 40. Maybe when we round down, the tenths place will decrease from 30 to 20. But no, 30 is the multiple of 10 below 34. So when you round down, you just go, you keep the multiple of 10, but the ones place becomes a zero. Now let's try a really interesting one. Let's think about rounding the number of the number 35. 
to the nearest ten. And first, before we even try to do it, let's think about the two options. Well, we've already seen it. 35 is sitting right over here. On this number line, that is 35. And once again, we have two options. 35, we can round it up to 40, or we could round it down to 30. I encourage you to pause the video and think about this. Well, this one is a little bit of a conundrum because it's five away from both of them. It's five away from 40 and five away from 30. So the mathematical community has de decided to define what to do in the case where you have a five in the ones place. If you have a five or more in the ones place, you will round up. This is just a rule. Five or more in the ones place, you round up. So 35, you round up to 40. Notice, the six in the ones place was five or more. So if you're rounding to the nearest 10, you round up to 40. A four in the ones place is not five or greater, so we round it down. And so this gives a pretty good clue for these other two numbers. Let's try, let's see what happens with 26. 26, what are the two options? What is the multiple of 10 above 26, and what is the multiple of 10 below 26? Well, the multiple of 10 above 26 is 30, and the multiple of 10 below 26 is 20. So if we round up, we go to 30. If we round down, we go to 20. Well, if we're rounding to the nearest 10, we look at the tens place. That's what we're going to round. We're going to round to the nearest 10. But then we look at the ones place. The ones place is going to decide it. And we see here this is 5, 5, or greater. Or you could say this is greater than or equal to 5. So we round up. 26 rounded to the nearest 10, we round up to 30. Now what about 12? What about 12? I think you're getting the hang of this. Well, let's think about the multiple of 10 above 12. So we can either round up to 20, so 12 is sitting right around, right around here. We either round up to 20, or we round down to 10. Well, if we're going to round to the nearest 10, we have to look at the ones place. We have to look at the ones place right over here. This is less than 5. Since it's less than 5, we round down, which makes sense because it's also closer to 10 than it is to 20. So we round down, and ra rounding 12 to the nearest 10, you actually get 10. Okay, friends. So hopefully that review of rounding to the nearest 10 helps a little bit add that knowledge from today onto what we learned yesterday. And like I mentioned yesterday, yesterday was day one of rounding to the nearest 10. Every day it should make a little, little, little bit more sense to you than it did the day before, okay? So we're going to continue practicing. What I want to do. So every day it should be getting a little bit easier for you. So today's activity is the one that I mentioned. You can either do on paper or directly into your Google Drive. If you choose to do it in your Google Drive, you'll just make a copy of the Google slide and go ahead and then type in the numbers there. But it's going to look the same either way. Or you can print off this paper and you can cut out the numbers below and glue them where they go in the sort. So no matter which way you decide to go, it is about rounding to the nearest 10 and sorting these numbers into the correct columns. So these columns are, have different headers. This one says rounds to 70, rounds to 80, rounds to 220, rounds to 230, rounds to 100, rounds to 110. So you're going to look at the numbers below and cut them out, or you can move them electronically into their correct headers. So I know, for example, the number 97. 97. I know the first benchmark number is 90. If I think about multiples of 10, 90, 100. I know that 97 is somewhere between 90 and 100. Then I think about that number in the ones place is a 7. So I know that it's that 5, 6, 7. Oh, there it is. It's higher than that midpoint. So I know I'm going to round it up to the next highest multiple of 10. So in this case, if it's between 90 and 100, and I'm rounding it up to the higher number, I know that 97 belongs in this column. So you're going to go ahead, take some time, finish this activity, and then make sure that you submit it through Canvas. If it's through a paper copy, just take a picture and submit it through Canvas. If it's your Google slide, just go ahead and submit that the way that we always do. Okay, friends? And I'll meet you back here tomorrow.